So I think I'm going to do a recommendations movie thing for artists, specifically. Because um, I work as a physical theater performer and a mime and an actor and a musician, and so I have some recommendations. Things that I find really inspiring as a performer. Not just as a movie guy, but as a performer. Things that inspire me or continue to inspire me. Um, so, recommendations. Well, let's do mime recommendations. Um, my teachers have given me recommendations for a lot of things, and ones that really stand out to me is, um, like, Water from Chocolate, which is a, um, it's a foreign movie about this girl who is in love, and, like, she expresses her love through her food rather than through her words or anything like that. She expresses it through her cooking, and all these kind of, like, magical things happen because of it, and it's great. Um, that's, like, a really good one. Very inspiring. Um, another one in that same vein that's that's very interesting is totally different movie, but very interesting is a movie called Little Otek. And Little Otek is about a couple that can't have a child, and so they decide the husband finds a root on the ground, which is funny because I've actually found a root like this before that looks like a person. If you've ever seen a plant or old, it was a potato actually that I found, but. Uh, looks like a person, he takes it home and it becomes a kid and they sort of imbue this thing with life, you know, just from like they feed it, feed it and everything with their love and it like literally takes on a life of its own, which is told through stop motion. So kick-ass. One of my favorite movies ever. It's totally bizarre and riveting the whole time. You just can't get enough. Um, another one that's totally fascinating is He Who Gets Slapped. And I had to look it up. It was made in 1924 um, by Victor... Shostrom, and uh, you can find it in 1924. And I read the play, actually, since I'm a theater performer. I read the, read the play a few years back, like six years back, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, and I've always been interested in it. And the movie was awesome. It's so much better than the play. The play has got a lot of kind of problems with it, the way it's written, I think. Um, it's not the best script, but the idea is fascinating, but the movie really puts in perspective. It makes a lot more sense, but it's very well done. It's a very good silent film. Um, I was lucky enough to watch it at Film Festival. It was the closing film with full, uh, musical accompaniment. It was so kick-ass. Highlight of my life watching film. Um, and so, in that same vein, uh, you gotta see Federico Fellini. He made a movie called, uh, Eight and a Half. And he's made a bunch of other movies, and there are all kinds of stuff. My teacher recommends Satyricon. Nothing against Satyricon. Um, other people, my other teacher recommends, uh, oh man, the movie that he's known, he's really famous for this movie, La Strada. La Strada, which I've seen multiple times, and like, I enjoy it. But, but, it was eight and a half. Eight and a half. First ten minutes, I cried, and I'm not somebody that cries, really at all. Um, like people die and I don't cry. Uh, so, that I know. And I saw this and I cried ten minutes in. Because I realized that there had been no plot development. There had been no speaking. There had been basically nothing, and yet I felt like I'd already seen a whole freaking movie in ten minutes. And nothing had happened. If you've seen, like, a David Lynch movie before, if you've, like, you know, watched, like, a tripped-out movie, watch Eight and a Half by Federico Fellini. Because he takes all his circus stuff and all of his crazy imagination and he pours it into a movie that's about, it's one of those movies, a movie about a director making a movie. Um, and oh my god, it's, it's amazing. And like, you watch the first 10 minutes and I was so invested in it before I even know who the hell what was going on, who the person was or what their story was. I didn't even care. It was so good that I was totally sold. Um, which is beautiful. It's like looking at a painting, you know, you're just sold. It's like, this is, the, this is awesome. Uh, another movie that I really recommend, because it's so good, our film club in college is actually named after this movie. It's called The American Astronaut. It's by the Billy Nayer Band. They just made a follow-up called Stingray Sam. Um, and American Astronaut is awesome in like every level. It's made by a band to promote their music, but they're, they've made a lot of kooky movies in the past to promote their songs. and. It's so it's so awesome. Um, you can get it on Netflix, which is great. And American Astronaut 
Um, not the crappy, stupid, whatever Billy Bob Thornton movie, but the Billy Nair movie. It's black and white. It's so well filmed. It's so well shot. It's made on no budget whatsoever. And it's like masterfully made. I mean, this, this is a masterfully made movie. It is unbelievably well done and totally oddball. The pace scene's totally bizarre and they pull it off. I mean, it really works and like props to them for being so fantastic. And that's, that's really inspiring as an artist because these guys, like, they're musicians and they made a movie that's better than most movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, awesome. And if you don't believe that that's true, uh, look it up on IMDb or whatever online. I mean, like, it's a, it's a raven good time. And the second movie they just put out just barely didn't win um, the Cannes Film Festival. So, uh, or Sundance, excuse me, barely didn't win Sundance. It lost to Quentin Tarantino because he's more popular. But that's... Yeah, some things are just silly like that. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else do I recommend? There's so many. Um, there's like I think Igmar Bergman. He made a really good one. Um, it's called uh, Tinsel, and uh, Tinsel and Hay or something. Tinsel and Tinsel and Tinsel Town. Tinsel and something, and that one's really good too. Um, simple but it works it's like La Strada, but I like it more than La Strada. Um, don't tell Leonard Pitt <laughs> but I like it more um, oh my god you know it's a really good movie oh such a good movie Murder My Sweet every artist should watch Murder My Sweet Murder My Sweet is film noir probably the best film noir ever maybe the best movie um, that you can like ever watch for sheer entertainment it is so well done like this is the smile of somebody that likes a well-done movie. This movie is awesome. It looks so freaking good. Uh, all the shots in it are like, you could just like take still photos and I would like frame it on my wall and I would be totally happy. You could just look at it, you know? It's like looking at the dogs playing poker. You just look at the photo and people are like, oh, that's cool. And they'll just be like looking at it. And then you'd be like, oh yeah, that's just a still from a movie actually. The whole movie is that cool. Um, the plot is totally awesome. And it's very interesting to watch, which I think is what movies are all about. You know, it's about being interesting to watch. This movie is very interesting to watch. It's exciting as hell. It's awesome. Um, what's another one that's like really cool for the artist and all of us? Another one, oh my God. Another one that's really good is um, Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter, Spring. Um, it's so good. Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter, Spring is about a boy that goes to stay with this monk to learn from him when he's like four years old. Because, you know, people have done that historically. It's how they learned things in China and these other countries. And I think this is when it takes place in Korea. Um, but it's, so it follows this boy through his life living with this monk. The movie basically has, there is like no speaking. You could say nothing happens. But nothing needs to happen because the movie speaks for itself. It looks totally kick-ass and it's totally awesome. It's this, like, young kid living with this monk, and, like, honestly, who wants, you know, it's, like, the whole idea of, like, becoming a monk, like, if you just go there when you're four years old, yeah, four-year-old kid wanting to be a monk, easier said than done. And the movie really, really pulls the punches on you emotionally. You're just, like, it's so good. I mean, like, if you like the karate kid, you're gonna think this movie is, is gone with the wind. Um, good. If you like the karate kid with Mr. Miyagi, you're gonna think this, this is, like, uh, the guy that made The Karate Kid probably watched this movie, like, a billion times, um, to get, because <laughs> it's so good, and then he met Pat Morita, so he's got that, but, um, man, it's the way to go, yeah.